Hello, Belinda Woolrich here and welcome. Thank you for attending this online workshop wherever you are and whatever time it is in the world. It is great to have you here online and we appreciate your time and effort to be on board. Our best wishes to you, your family and community and friends. A bit more about me. I'm Belinda Woolrich. I'm a downsizing expert after project managing hundreds of downsizers and helping people through this transformation over the last decade. I'm also an author of the book Right Size Your Home, The Empty Nester's Guide to a Stress-Free Downsize. I am also the Director of Learning at rightsizeyourhome.com.au where I have written and designed several courses to help people in their downsize and get in control of this journey. So first of all, as you know, the presentation is when is the right time to leave the nest, the nest being our family nest and empty nesters. First topic is what, what are our typical clients and their feelings? And then perhaps that can um, resonate with you. So I thought the best way to, to talk about this particular subject being when is the right time is actually compare it to over a decade's worth of clients. And as I've met so many people in this area um, and in this demographic, um, I wanted to talk about them and then how their feelings are. And then maybe you might resonate with them. Second topic is what happens when people do nothing and again unfortunately I have seen quite a few circumstances where people have done nothing about leaving the family home and unfortunately down the track it really does get too late. Um, so just wanted to talk about a couple of crises that we've um, seen and um, just wanted to check in with you around really you wouldn't want that to happen and the impact that it has um, to you and your family. Now I'm also going to cover on topic three is what a normal downsizer challenges. Are they yours? Uh, and if again if you resonate with them um, then that may help you with this right time and the decision. Uh, slide four is when is the right time to leave the nest? So um, it all starts with a discussion and then goes through a series of um, events. And what I've put on there is my framework from my book, Right Size Your Home, The Empty Nester's Guide to a Stress-Free Downsize. I thought that would be a great summary to capture then uh, the steps moving forward from where we are right now, deciding when is the right time. All right, without further ado, then moving on to topic one. So those typical clients I was talking about and their feelings, is that, is that me or is that you? Could that be you? And will this resonate with you? So those typical clients, generally in all um, my time of um, helping empty nesters through this project management in my business, there are some things that I found uh, that they were quite typical around the type of client that we see. So generally, everyone is 55 plus. They are family home owners. Most of our clients have had children that have either left home or there may be one left. Sometimes they keep coming back, the children keep coming back. And generally our, our clients are still residing in that family home. When I challenge the, our clients and say, how does, how does home feel for you? Is it serving the purpose that it was bought for? Generally, the answer is no. So the home is too large. Um, there are rooms that are not being used. Um, and the actual clients themselves maybe only normally um, actually utilize possibly a third of the actual house. They also find that the kids don't visit as much as they thought, and they actually don't need the space. So in talking to them about the actual footprint that this home covers and what their use is versus what it was used before is, as I said, generally a third. They're also in an area where it was quite geographically very useful as far as when the family uh, unit was together as they were growing up, but now not so useful. It's a little bit of an effort to get to the shops and everything maybe generally they have to hop in the car for, and it becomes a little bit of a, um, 
stressful um, exercise to know that everything has to be in the car and not as handy as you'd like it to be to get around. Now our typical client's general feelings and their feelings about the home. I'll hear comments like the children are nagging me or the children are, are nagging me to move out because they don't want the home or they don't feel that um, mum and dad is safe in the home on their own. Or the children are actually making them feel quite guilty and hanging on to the home. So feeling guilty um, can be on both parts, as in they keep wanting me to go and I don't want to, or they keep wanting me to hang on. But I do want to um, just jump in there and remind you that it is actually, it is actually your home and it is actually your decision. So sometimes overwhelmed by the thought of a downsize, uh, there's some feelings of um, disbelief that <laughs> We really need to have this on. We have this huge project on and we really don't know um, how to approach it. There's so much to do that I'm feeling quite overwhelmed. Also, the feelings are that they're sick and tired of worrying about the home. So there's things needing to be done all the time. As I was saying before, the footprint's quite large. There's cleaning, there's maintenance. Um, they feel like a bit of a slave to the pool and the garden and the green bin that often comes up. The other thing is that they're actually unsure how to maximize the profit. So knowing that there is a downsize to do, where do you start? But then if I go and spend some money, will that be wasted? How do I do that? How do I do that carefully and ensure my return on investment? Another interesting one is that our clients want, don't want to lose control. So they've often put all of their efforts, paid the mortgage, their working life into upsizing the property and having everything work so well for the children and in control of that situation to now feeling quite the opposite or starting to feel quite the opposite. And with the sale of a family home after spending 10, 20, 30, 40, sometimes 50 plus years, uh, they're getting into um, a situation where they feel like they're losing that control. And, it, and they tell me it doesn't feel good. I was talking about jumping in the car earlier and making sure um, and having a, having a um, home that is not as convenient as it used to be when having children. Um, another big part is starting to feel isolated. So in an area where it was terrific, it might have been in, in a suburb where it was down a cul-de-sac and there were a family friends around and the kids would be playing in the street all the time to now being quite disconnected from an environment. Often the um, neighbors have left and the friends have gone. And then of course, as touched on before, the maintenance is just too much. And the amount of money that's actually going on outsourcing. So whether it be cleaning, whether it be repairs, whether it be gardening, whether it be pool maintenance, all of those sorts of things, the maintenance is just too much and can be a bit overwhelming. I was wondering, um, those of you who are on the, the workshop today, if you have any other feelings or issues that um, you know that you have been um, concerned about with regard to your family home. Another one is about um, feeling a bit of grief for the home. It's almost like a bit of a loss. And uh, I, th I would link that back to um, feeling that you've spent all this time working on the property and having it um, part of your life. But then suddenly it's, it's um, a feeling of loss because it's been part of your life for so long that we're actually feeling like you're going to lose it. And what I would like to do is try and turn those feelings around. So this is about putting a different hat on and putting yourself at the center of the process. So all of those facts and feelings, you may resonate with those and you may have some more. So please feel free to put them in. But um, I actually want to talk now about how we can turn those feelings around to change it to a more positive um, for you. So what happens if you do do nothing and what would happen to me and my family? 
Um, unfortunately, I have seen some sad stories of people who have um, left it too late and I do work quite closely with a couple of financial planners too that um, do ask me to help um, get some properties ready quickly where things have been left too long. And I've had clients in their 80s and 90s who I feel quite sad have missed out on such a more enjoyable retirement because if they had have released the family home earlier on, then they wouldn't have felt so trapped and um, a bit of a slave to their home um, in their much later decades. So my crusade was writing the book and trying to get that community message out about making sure you get so much more out of retirement if you can consider releasing the stress and the burden of a family home. And as I said before, if you have a property that is not serving the purpose that you bought it for, then it would be terrific to find one that does, that you can actually um, you can actually enjoy and it can serve a purpose that you've bought it for. Um, too many sad stories. I've talked about a couple in the book um, and I've talked about most importantly, some better stories um, in the book in the last chapter where um, there are some good stories around people who always seem to say, and our clients always seem to say uh, that they wish they'd have done it sooner. It's a very, very uh, popular comment after the right size has been done. I also think that there are plenty of holidays that have been missed out on and um, too much time is taken up in keeping the maintenance. So all of those stresses of general maintenance around the property, be it gardens, be it pools, be it um, painting, be it whatever, worrying about all sorts of things, um, putting that time and money to yourself um, for me is a much better way of spending a retirement. The last thing you want to do is to make sure that, um, well, the last thing you want is that you're having a downsize under pressure. Um, so we have seen some crisis situations, as I said, um, they are all under pressure and it's, it is such a shame. I find it very sad when I'm caring for all these items in someone's home in their late decades has had to leave and not come back. Um, that I'm taking care of their things for them. I wish that um, they had have done it when they had um, had the means to do it themselves. Something in the chat box here is um, it would be good to put some money for ongoing maintenance and cost towards. What about helping the kids? That's a terrific comment there. So um, I think that's a terrific idea that you've got costs going into the footprint of that property. Um, it would be good to put it towards a holiday with the kids or giving them a helping hand, most definitely. That's a great comment. Something that I'd like to put to you, and I, th I generally get a yes when I'm doing my public speaking on this one, is about what about your friends? So you have friends, probably, there's probably someone that you would know that does actually need a right size. There's someone I think that you know that is of that demographic. They're in a property which you believe is too big for them. And you probably are a little bit worried about them. I know that um, my mum was in a property that was too big for her. And I used to worry about her when she would be out walking her dogs. Um, no mobile phone with her, etc. And it would concern me each day. So you're probably worried about someone with a situation similar or, or something that you're worried about in their day to day in a larger home. It's quite possible that what would happen to me and my family, as I've got in the topic heading here, it's quite possible that something, someone may be thinking that about you as well. And it's quite possible that you're, you may be stressing your children out. Hi there, Belinda Woolrich here, downsizing expert, author, and also director of learning at rightsizeyourhome.com.au. I'd like to briefly let you know about our fantastic online training courses, helping downsizers get in control of their downsizing journey. Part one of our course is shifting your mindset. This is about understanding the right time, moving roadblocks, and how to be ready for your downsize. Part two is the great declutter challenge. This is about planning and getting stuck into your family home declutter. Part three is adding value to your family home. How to profit with your best sale price and process. I hope you love the courses as much as me.
give it a go. What are you waiting for? You'll find them and much more at www.rightsizeyourhome.com.au. All right, so slide number three, the topic number three, what are the normal downsizer challenges and are they yours? So in this family home that may be too big, let's see if these are your challenges as well. So we've been through the thoughts and feelings and also the, the, the typical client. Um, now what about the actual challenges that you're faced with? These are some popular things. So this is all from feedback from clients that we've had in the past. And these items come up at many of our, um, at the speaking events as well. So do you find it a challenge to get people to turn up to do things? Um, it, and that could be some maintenance at home. It could be some help that you need around the house. Do you find that they don't, don't turn up? And you can't find actual people, the actual people to do the things that you want to do as well. The other things is how about um, not sure who to trust. So often if we need something done, we're not well connected. And then you be, might be looking online or looking for someone or a friend of a friend of a friend. And you're not actually sure who to trust, but you're having them in your home. Also a little bit resentful of the work. So there may be a bit of work required at the house you may be feeling that the house is too big and then suddenly it's it, not suddenly, but over time, it's becoming quite painful for you. It's stressful. You're finding a lack of energy to do it, especially I find I hear um, people in the garden. So constantly getting on your knees and constantly pulling out those green bins. They are too big, um, too big, but they never seem to have enough room in them, do they? Um, so lack of energy and also resenting the work that's involved in the home. <clears throat> also finding the house is too big and hard to maintain. So there could be that you're actually, um, there are rooms that you've never been into for quite some time. Um, the, children's room, the children could have left all their stuff behind. That's an interesting one. That always comes up and always gets a bit of a giggle. The cost also is a challenge, cost of outsourcing all the time. There may have been at a point where the kids were old enough when they were all at home, everyone was chipping in to do things, but now it seems to be all outsourced. And as I touched on before, a lack of freedom for you. So there's, there seems to be so much time going into the property that you would way rather spend it um, seeing people, seeing friends, playing bridge, whatever it might be, seeing the kids, playing with the grandchildren. Another common challenge is the kids won't go uh, or you don't want them to go. Now that's also touched on in the book as well. There's a, maybe a codependency there. Um, or they have gone and they've left their stuff behind. Another challenge is that you don't know what to do with all the stuff that's in there and how could you possibly um, approach the downsize because you don't know how to do it. Not knowing where to start is a huge one um, for family homeowners. Um, the property that you can see on the picture here was actually a client of ours and that this client ha had um, two sets of furniture from in-laws as well as um, her parents that she'd inherited and the children had gone and she needed to um, right size. So what to do with all that stuff and in, in particular that was um, plenty to deal with. So it does, it's very, very common to have that. All right, so what I would like to cover here is um, the actual um, topic number four, which is the actual time. When is the time to leave? And that actually um, flows straight into the right sizing decision. So what I would like to suggest is, did you agree with any of the um, previous challenges? So we talked about house being too big. We talked about the kids have left home. We talked about not knowing what to do with all of the things, but you know that the house is not serving the purpose that you bought it for. So if you've answered yes to those, then now would be the right time. And there's always no time like the present because you just never know what's around the corner as, as we have recently seen. So I think that um, the time is when it's right for you. 
And if you're not sure when it's right for you, if you resonate with those things that we've talked about, then I can bring you to the point where I believe that it is. So then you're faced with the decision. And I think that, that those things that you're thinking, well, how will I get this done? My kids are too busy. Who can help me? And where do I start? All of those sorts of questions means you're, you're through that decision. If you're thinking then on the next phase, I think that you've got to the step one of the actual decision, which is to sit down and have the discussion. So I think that's great. There's plenty of um, thoughts and feelings and challenges listed in the first couple of chapters of my book and it would be great for you to have a read of those um, but you can get an ebook or you can order a hard copy. Um, it's a terrific place to start because when you do resonate with those feelings you will come to the realisation that it is time and then you can move on to that step one discussion. We've got um, the discussion We've got, then got the steps of moving into the project breakdown, getting things done and um, moving over to present your property well for maximum profit and then getting the actual job now done. Now that can take some time, but it's really the first step. And um, what a great time now um, to be able, when you are now in your home, to be able to have a think about putting that time efficiently and effectively towards uh, looking at the inside of your home and using that time really, really wisely. So the next webinars will be talking about how to do that and also how to actually um, how do you actually do the inside? How can you present it? What is real estate even looking like right now? Is it the right time to sell your home? How do you even sell the home right now? And then also working through, these webinars will work through the actual steps and the decision. How do you know when is the best time to sell the family home from a financial perspective? We also do have a webinar that will talk about the right time from financial perspective too. I think um, the time is right when it is actually right for you. Generally, if you're buying and selling in a similar market, the changeover costs um, stay um, together. So I would put the personal perspective first and I don't think that you can ever foresee into the future financially as to what's going to happen. But if you've got that transaction happening at a similar time, it's a safe, it's usually a safer environment to do that. So given that it's right personally, should be that it's right financially, but always these sorts of steps and these decisions, we always recommend to make sure that you are consulting um, with a financial advisor that does specialize in the downsizing demographic. So the next webinar will be looking at all of those roadblocks that are in front of you and also the, um, the actual um, real estate environment right now and then going into the steps for decluttering and getting through those um, decisions through to the actual doing of the project. We would also love you to um, tune in for our next webinar and they, how do I even sell my home right now? Then how to create some impact in the garden. What a great time to be spending time in the garden. Most definitely, it's a beautiful time of year to do it too. And of course, roadblocks. All right, a couple of learning opportunities for you to upgrade and find out more about what we have to offer. You can, of course, buy the ebook, um, which is $9.99. The Right Size Your Home, The Empty Nester's Guide to a Stress-Free Downsize. It's a much deeper dive of this um, getting your right size right. Um, and I'm sure you will enjoy reading about that. Also, our online courses. I recommend that you start with the first course. It's $49. Right Size Your Home, course number one, shifting your mindset. So head to rightsizeyourhome.com.au and follow the training courses um, and select the, the one that you're after there. I recommend starting with that number one and I hope you love it as much as I did writing it. So thank you. Just to end on this, once you believe in yourself, understand you are doing the right thing, then the project becomes purely a logistical process. Belinda Woolrich makes no representation and gives no warranty as to the accuracy of the information 
and does not accept any responsibility for any errors or inaccuracies in or omissions from the information contained herein, whether negligent or otherwise, and shall not be liable for any loss or damage howsoever arising as a result of any person acting or refraining from acting in reliance on any information contained herein. No listener or workshop attendee shall rely solely on the information contained in this as it does not purport to be comprehensive to render specific advice. This disclaimer does not purport to exclude any warranties implied by law which may not be lawfully excluded. This workshop, which includes any resources supplied, is only for the use of the intended recipients and is confidential and or privileged. Belinda Warwick shall not be liable for any errors, emissions, viruses, loss and or damage arising from using, opening or transmitting this workshop.